Hello everybody, this is Dr. Shikha Grival and I am working as a consultant gynecologist and I am a specialist in Indra IVF Ratlam branch. Today I am here to talk to you about blastocyst culture and laser assisted hatching. But before that, I would like to have a word about COVID-19. We all know about the worsening situation of COVID-19. The second wave of Corona has actually um, uh, has increased infectivity and has even increased mortality rate. We all are in a fear of panic and fear. What can we do about it? Please always remember, prevention is the best cure. Don't step out of the house unless it is absolutely necessary. And if you do have to get out of the house, don't forget to wear your mask, maintain social distancing and wash your hands every now and then. This is how we can fight against COVID. And even if you get infected, please don't fear, please don't panic. Remember, still 70 to 80 percent of the people can get treated at home with medicines. You only need to remain positive, to uh, believe in yourself. So don't panic. Only 10 to 20 percent of people actually needs hospitalization and less than 1% of the people are getting severely infected with the disease. So why should we think that we will fall in that less than 1% of population? Try to be in that 70 to 80% of the group. Together, we will fight against COVID. Now, coming back to our topic, that is blastocyst culture and laser-assisted hatching. To understand what is basically blastocyst culture and laser-assisted hatching, let me tell you about the normal cycle of fertilization. Normally, one or two follicles start developing in either of the two ovaries in a normal menstrual cycle. They increase in size with each passing day. When they reach a particular size, they, uh, from these follicles, egg is formed and this egg is picked up by the fimbrial end of the fallopian tube. This egg remains in the fallopian tube for 24 to 48 hours. In this time period, if it receives a sperm, then an embryo is formed. This embryo starts dividing from cleavage stage to blastocyst stage. That is, please mark my word, it is the blastocyst stage, that is day 5 or day 6 of the embryo, that the uterus receives the embryo. This uh, embryo then gives off its outer covering of zona pellucida which is called as hatching and then gets implanted into the uh, endometrial lining or the endometrial layer of the uterus. And then it develops a fetus is formed and then a baby is formed and after nine months we get a healthy baby. So this is the normal fertilization cycle. In an IVF, what we do is mimic this natural process. It is not an artificial process up to a certain stage what we are doing, we are assisting you to form a baby. And after that, it is your body which will be doing the rest of the work. So it is not an artificial process. It is just mimicking of the natural up to a certain stage. So that the hindrances which you have because of which you are not able to conceive are solved. So in an IV, what we do, we start your gonadotrophin injections which are started on day 2 or day 3 of the cycles. Around 10 to 12 injections are given and then when the uh, follicles reach up to a maximum size or the size what we want, a particular size, then we give a trigger injection and then after 36 hours, what we do is we extract these follicles. From these follicles, eggs uh, are uh, removed and these eggs are then fertilized with the sperm of your husband. This is done outside your body that is in the lab. An embryo is found and this embryo is then cultured. Now, here we can either culture these embryos for day 2 or day 3 or we can culture it up to day 5 or day 6. Day 2 or day 3 embryos are up to cleavage stage, so they are called cleavage stage embryo. And day 5 or day 6 embryos are up to blastocyst stage, so they are called as blastocyst stage embryo. Now, what is the difference between these two set of embryos? If, uh, since we know that day 2 or day 3 is an earlier form of embryo, if we transfer these embryos into your own, it is not necessary that they will actually reach up to the size of blastocyst, that is day 5. Some of the embryos may just get uh, discarded by the body. 
before even they reach the day 5. So because of this fear, what we do is we transfer more number of embryos, maybe day we transfer five, four, five, three embryos. If supposedly all these embryos are good, then all of them get implanted and then we land up in multiple pregnancy, which the burden into the uterus is too much. So this burden the uterus cannot take up and it results in preterm birth or very less take home baby rate. So if we transfer blastocyst uh, stage embryo, then what happens is we transfer either one or two embryos. This, this much burden the body can take. Even one embryo transfer, that is single embryo transfer, can be done if we take good quality blastocyst. This increases the chances of take home baby trait. The second thing is, since we know that uh, it is the day five embryo which is received by the uterus in a normal cycle, so uh, it can easily, it is very much near to the natural. So uh, now, once we have uh, transferred the blastocyst, hatching will happen. Either it can be assisted hatching or natural hatching and the embryo has to get implanted into the uterus. But if we are transferring day two or day three, now the day two or day three embryo need to go to day five embryo, then hatching will happen, which will be obviously natural hatching and then the embryo will get implanted. So that means the success rate of implantation of the blastocyst is more than cleavage stage or day two or day three embryo. And one more thing, if the embryo is chromosomally abnormal, there are very less chances that it will go up to day five stage. Day two or day three, even a chromosomally abnormal embryo can most of the time grow. So uh, the chances of success again is more in the case of blastocyst culture. Now, the second thing is laser assisted hatching. As I told you, once uh, the um, embryo reaches a blastocyst stage in a natural cycle, what happens is it uh, gives off its outer covering, which is zona pellucida, and then gets implanted into the uh, uterine endometrial lining. This process is called as hatching. Sometimes, in some cases, like uh, increased age of the mother or in cases of PCOD or in cases of endometriosis or even in IVF cycles, that's ART cycles, what happens is this zona pellucida is thick and the embryo cannot give off this, uh, this zona pellucida lining which results in unsuccessful IVF cycle or IVF failure. Even thick zona pellucida is, can be a cause of uh, unexplained infertility or unsuccessful IVF cycles. So nowadays a new technique has come in which what we do is we do artificial lysis of this uh, zona pellucida. It can be done by many ways amongst them one is laser assisted hatching. This in this method what we do is we make the uh, zona pellucida thin and resulting easy transfer of uh, embryo into the uh, endometrial lining so that it can get implanted. So the implantation rate increases up to 15 to 20 percent with laser assisted hatching. So my only uh, statement is please don't uh, think before uh, getting these techniques for your IVF cycles. This, these techniques, these newer techniques will help you, will assist you in getting your IVF pregnancy or a successful pregnancy. So it is always best, it is always better to get these cycles, uh, your IV cycle with blastocyst culture and laser assisted hatching or any other newer technique. So uh, this is it for today. Thank you. Stay safe and stay healthy.